Hey guys, it's Kat and I'm back today for my favourites of June uh, and fails of June and uh, just sort of recap because um, what you probably didn't know is that I've actually taken about a week and a half off filming um, for no other reason other than the weather's been horrible and it's been horrible to film. Everything is like really hard to colour correct and it just looks crap and it's you're like I've just been two hours filming and it looks like shit but also I had like um, not a cold but I'd call it the sniffles like I was a little bit unwell and I was just like look I can't be bothered so I didn't have uh, two videos up last week because I was taking a very short hibernation break so I'm back so I feel like June's been a funny month because um, like at the start of June it was a carryover from when I was you know filming all those long like seven day eyeshadow reviews um so there was a couple that i put up in june um and that i finished off in june so there was sort of like that period of time and then since then i'm like i don't want to try colors i just want to wear brown so the last couple of weeks have been like i'm using my project pan stuff i'm using stuff that i know works for me um and i don't have to think about it i just want makeup that looks flattering i don't want to have to think about constructing looks so i had a really weird june where it sort of split and thinking about the start of june i'm like that feels like so long ago I I can't believe it's July, but June feels like the start of June was like three months ago. Anyway, so I had to really think really hard about what products I've been using. All right, so this is a bit of a mishmash because like I said, June was a bit of a mishmash, but let's get on to the products. So in June, I used up, or was it end of July? Whatever, I used up my last um, Shape Tape concealer, which was in my Project Pan. And ever since using those up, because I literally had two Shape Tape concealers that last me like a year each. So I haven't used concealers for the longest time, but I was able to dig into my drawer of backup concealers and pull out some Maybelline ones that I used to love. And now I'm just like, why did I ever put you down? These are really, really great. So we've got the Fit Me Concealer, which I featured in um, like an old favorites video. So I sort of did, did my makeup using some old favorites from the past five to 10 years. And this is the concealer I used. I love it. Like it's not as high coverage, I don't think, as Shape Tape or... It's good coverage, but I think Shape Tape just looks thicker on the skin, if that makes sense. I, don't, I think they both cover the same amount, but this just feels like it's a lighter layer. Anyway, I love this. It's been going with me in my handbag if I'm going out and I want to touch up because this sort of doubles as like a good foundation and concealer. My shade is light and I just, I love it. What I'm wearing today is the Instant Age Rewind Concealer. This is a concealer I haven't touched. Like this one was an unused one, but I haven't used this type of concealer for probably five years now. And I think the reason why that happened was because I originally used the light shade. It was too sort of, um, I don't know, light coverage for me. And it was too sort of, light whereas now i use the shade medium and i really love this stuff so i pulled off the sponge as you can see and i do find when you turn it to click it to get the product out sometimes it comes out slowly you put the lid on you go away and then you come back the next day and you're like oh it's still kept going with splurting out product but it's such a good concealer and even though i do have fairly light skin this one matches me really well it's probably a smidge too dark but it's like my skin tone so uh, even though it might make my under eye area look slightly darker than I sort of want it works really well I love it it works well with so many things so these two concealers are like old favorites brought back and I'm really appreciating them talking about some old favorites brought back I'm going to be talking about some lip products um last month when I did my favorites and fails I talked about the lip combination I've been using a lot and it was actually my lip combination from my project pan so it was a color pop lippy stick and the lip gloss together I've still been using that but one that I like even more um is this lip liner and I'm very upset it's going to go because I put this in my project pan because it had broken um, and the like the lead inside had pulled out and I thought I may as well use it up before it completely dries out and it's unusable and it's crap. But it's the Kylie Cosmetics uh, Dolce K lip liner, which goes with the lip kit of the liquid lipstick. I have since used the liquid lipstick because um, I like the lip liner so much. I'm like, oh, what's it like with the liquid lipstick? It's nice. But I like the lip liner more than I like the liquid lipstick, which is strange because when I first got the pack ages ago, probably like two years ago now, um, I was like, the liquid lipstick's nice, but I just don't use lip liners. But now I have been loving this. So it's in my project pan. It was much bigger. I've been using it 
almost every day, not quite, but almost. And it's a perfect sort of like nude brown cool tone color. So what I do and what I've done today and what I've done in previous videos, there was a video where I wore brown eyeshadow and teal um, on my lower lash line. And a lot of people love that eye makeup, which I'll get to the eye makeup later, but um, they also really like the lip. And the lip was this lip liner, which I put on like I've done today, mainly around the edges of my lips. Then I color it in really just lightly, sort of like ombre it in. And then I've been topping that with something that's new to my life right now, and I really like it. It's the ColourPop So Juicy Lip Gloss. This shade is roundabout. The shade is roundabout. So it's a light sort of cool toned pinky nude. It's very, very glossy. It's not sticky, but it is like a thicker, very, very shiny gloss. So it lasts really well, but it gives that really like moist effect. I've also been using these like not just together. So I've been using these this with other lip glosses and other lip products. I've been using this over the top of liquid lipsticks, other lipsticks if I just want a bit more like shine, but I particularly love this combination. These are really nice glosses from ColourPop. And there's a few products in here that I'll be talking about um, where I've sort of been trying some ColourPop products that I haven't tried before and I'm gonna give you my thoughts on them. So there's more to come. All right, let's keep on the lip train. And um, what I've been doing, because since I tried all these colorful eyeshadows at the start of the month, um, and then I mainly just stuck to browns, um, I have been trying to pair it with either a nude lip like this, or I really like a sort of like darker, rich lip, because at the moment we're in winter, it's cold. So there's a lot of coats, a lot of jackets, and um, little scarves, and a, like a dark lip is really nice. Um, so I've gone back to my old MAC lipsticks. So I was sort of re-inspired to play with my MAC lipsticks when I did that old favorites video. And Russian Red is one that I pulled out. So it's a matte, it's a beautiful blue toned red. It's gorgeous. And one thing I love about this, um, I wore this all day when I was filming. So we filmed Beauty News. Um, I think we filmed something else. I was wearing it all day. I had multiple coffees, stopped for food and I didn't have to touch it up once. This is a beautiful, beautiful blue toned red. If you like a matte finish, but it's comfortable. I love it, it's staying out. I'm gonna wear it heaps. Um, another MAC thing, and this is not as old as that, but um, I sort of pulled this out cause I was just playing with makeup that sort of inspired me. And I was wearing this, which, okay, I'm sorry. There's gonna be some old limited edition stuff in this video because I've been pulling out makeup like I said, that inspires me. And some of them just happen to be discontinued products. Um, this is the Patrick Star MAC uh, Retro Matte Liquid Lip Color in Ultimate Diva. It came with one of the sets uh, that he released last year. And I love this color. Not only does that smell like that sort of MAC vanilla -y scent, but this is the most beautiful brown. So if I want this sort of brown color that I've got going on here, but I want it to be bold and matte and really long wearing, this one is fantastic. So I actually avoided um, trying these liquid lipsticks from MAC for the longest time because when they first came out, I heard some really mixed reviews about them. But this one, I can assure you, is beautiful. By the end of the day, it does feel like it's getting a little bit dry, which is when I go over the top with like a lip balm or a lip gloss or something. But it wears so well and that brown color is like perfection right now. I love it. So with a bit of a smoky brown eye, I love this. If you have it, pull it out, enjoy it. It's great. All right, I may as well get onto some eyeshadow palettes that I've been loving because I've been pulling out some eyeshadow palettes that um, just, I don't know, I find them really easy to create looks. Um, I really like the effect of them. I like the, you know, quality of them. Um, and the one that I've probably been using the most. So this is actually a limited edition one. It's no longer available. So once again, if you have this one in your collection, pull it out, give it some love. It's by Tarte. It's the Aspen Ovard uh, palette. And it is the most basic, eyeshadow and face palette in the world. But for some reason, it like speaks to me. Like on the days where I don't wanna think about what colors I'm gonna to put together or what's gonna work with my eye color and what's gonna work with my lip color, this is the palette I like to use. So it's got a blush and a highlight, which I don't really use them. Sometimes I use the highlighter on my eyes. Sometimes I use the blush on my eyes, but this is the sort of palette that I would take away traveling with me and use that on my face. But lately I've been mainly using other stuff on my face. But these eyeshadows, these basic browns, I really love them. There's something about them. I'm wearing them on the top of my lid today. Um, the sort of mattes just work really beautifully. There's like a lot of nudes and a lot of like warm toned, just basic sort of colors, but they just work so well. There's this dark warm brown. 
Um, it's just sort of, I've been going matte eye, just really basic, and I've been really, really loving these. They, they're just so nice. They blend really nicely. They work together really well. You can probably see them there that they're boring as hell. Um, but I love them. And if I want a nice sort of inner corner pop, which is what I've got going on today, I'll use that sort of um, quite intense shimmer. This is a really beautiful sort of shimmery bronze, but it's quite chunky, so I don't use it on a daily basis. If I want a shimmery sort of smoky warm brown, I'll use this one down here, because once again, that one is really, really nice. It's warm, but it's beautiful. I just love this as a basic palette. The quality is nice. I sort of, I, I've been using it a lot. So this is that basic shimmery brown. It just, it just works. So when I'm mainly using just mattes and some sort of basic colors, I've been reaching for this a lot. When I want to amp it up with a little bit more shimmer, I've been reaching for this. Once again, it's a limited edition thing, but I just really love it. It's the Atomic Blonde palette from NARS and inside I just, I'm digging it. Okay, it's a bit tough to open, here we go. So this once again, um, I've just been loving this. This is all shimmer, which is kind of annoying, um, but I've been loving it. So it's got the four eyeshadows up the top. I am using this color all over my lid today, mixed with some of the um, mattes from that Tarte palette. Um, I also use this to blend out my liner a bit to make it a little, a little bit softer. And then this highlighter is on my face and it's my favorite gold highlighter ever I've discovered. Um, so this is where I add a bit more shimmer and a bit more shine um, to the Tarte palette. So I've been loving this. This bronzer is a little bit deep for me right now, but if I want to add in a little bit more bronze, it works. But this highlight is beautiful. The shade is Last Call and it is the most gorgeous gold for my skin tone and just... I don't really like gold highlighters. I buy them all the time thinking I'm gonna love them, but they really disappoint me. This one, which I've just put there, I don't know if you can see, it doesn't actually look too gold on the skin. It just catches a light like it's wet look. It's gorgeous. I've tried so many gold highlighters in the past. One that comes to mind that I bought fairly recently is by Juvia's Place. This is the Nefertiti loose highlighter, which is supposed to be like a soft gold for like light skin. And this just sits on the skin and looks quite, it doesn't look like it works organically with the skin. So whereas I've got this sort of just wash of sheen that just gives that wet look, like face on, you don't see it. And then you see it and it just looks like a glow, which is really great for the cooler months because everything's drier. You've got heating going on. Your skin's feel, feeling a little bit drier. Um, everyone's a little bit miserable. You want a bit of glow. So it's beautiful. But if I compare that to this one, it's a lot more intense. I don't know if you can see. All right. I've just turned the lighting down a bit, but you can see that this gives just a wash, like a wet look. This just looks like, it looks nice to swatch, but actually on the skin applied, it doesn't look natural and it looks really jarring. So this is gorgeous. This I don't like so much. So when I'm not using my Project Pan highlighter, I'm definitely using this one. And I just think it gives me like, I don't know. It makes me happy. It's gorgeous. I love it. If you've got that palette, pull it out, enjoy it. It's beautiful. Another palette that I've been using just for enjoyment, something that just makes makeup really easy and gives really flattering looks is by Colored Rain. This is the Queen of Hearts palette. And I don't like, I love all shades in here. It's really, really beautiful, but not all shades are things that I'm looking for right now. So I think the mattes blend beautifully. I love this shade here, which is sort of like a cool tone brown. Um, and mixing that with these browns here are gorgeous. I do love the pops of color. And normally they would be the things I'm raving about. But right now I'm like, I like the brown, I like these browns, I like these browns, but this palette blends beautifully and whenever I've used it, it creates such gorgeous looks. And when I did do that look with the brown and the teal underneath that a lot of people wanted me to recreate, which I probably won't recreate, but um, I'll tell you what I used. I did use this palette. So I mainly used the browns. I think I used this brown or that, that gold. I think it was this brown and I mixed it with these browns. They blended beautifully. They look really, really flattering on the eye. Um, and those are the palettes that I've, that have brought me a lot of joy. And um, I've been reaching for the, cause they're like a safe place where you just know it's gonna look flattering. They're gonna behave really well and um, you're not gonna have to overthink it. And I've been really liking either going th the full gloss lip with brown or brown with red. I think it's just been really nice and really sort of nice to take a break from like trying to play with a lot of color, even though I do enjoy color still and I've put a bit of color in today just for this video. Um, basic brown is 
my jam right now. But I did want to give a bit of a recap on um, the palettes that I used at the start of the month. Um, the When I did do that brown look with the teal under my lower lash line, um, I did use this Linda Hallberg palette. This is the Spectral Eyeshadow Palette, and I used this shade um, on my lower lash line. Now, I do really like this palette. Um, it's just a really strange one for me because some of the colors in here are really beautiful and I find them very inspiring. I love the purples. I love this teal. I love this sort of purple here. Um, but these aren't like crazy pigmented. If you want a bold look, they do take a bit of building up. Um, and I did find that there was some elements of this. If you did see my review, I really didn't like this silver, but I do still really like these looks. And I think in spring, I'm going to pull these out and make sort of more, um, soft, colorful looks. But right now I'm all for the warm browns. So, uh, even though I do like this, I think it's fun and I did enjoy playing with it. Um, I found like it wasn't the right time for me to do it. I just wasn't vibing with it, but it is a fun palette. Uh, before that, I did play with these Kaleidos makeup palettes. So there were three released and I did a video doing a look with each of them. I'm actually using some colors from this on my lower lash line today. So basic browns, I'm using the Tarte and the NARS. And then I wanted to incorporate um, this purple because I love this purple. This is so unique to my collection. Um, I love it with browns. I love it with burgundies. I just really, really enjoy it. So I've popped that on my lower lash line today and I've put a little bit of that color next to it just on the lower lash line next to it. So this was this is the Astro Pink version. It's my favorite of the three. Um, I do quite like the quality of these. They're not like my favorite quality eyeshadows, but they're not horrible. Uh, my second favorite is the Futurism 2 Cyber Bronze. This one, I haven't picked this up for a while because um, I've been going basic brown, but this does have some basic browns. I love the mustard. This red is phenomenal. I can, I'm going to just like, play with pops of red and this is going to be the one I reach for. It's a metallic beautiful red. A few people have asked me how it compares to the shimmery red in the Pat McGrath uh, bronze seduction palette. That one is actually more impressive. Um, it's a thinner consistency and it's a lot more reflective but the tone's very similar. This just is a typical shimmery eyeshadow formula. That one's more like its own baked weird formula. It's its own thing and they will give very similar looks on the eye but the Pat McGrath one would look a little bit more reflective and a little bit more sparkly whereas this looks a little bit more bold and metallic but they're both beautiful and I wouldn't bother buying the Pat McGrath bronze seduction palette just for that one shade. This is a lot cheaper and it gives a very similar effect but not as um, reflective if that makes sense but it's a beautiful red I can see myself popping that into a lot of things so I do like these palettes I think they're really nice the mattes in here were quite powdery but usable the one that was my least favorite um, was actually the futurism one uh, this is a sci-fi green uh, a lot of people saw this as being a dupe for uh, the Melt Gemini palette and I just didn't like it. I thought the mattes were very, very patchy and I thought the shimmers, even though they were very intense, uh, they almost took over a look and they didn't have much base color. They were just all sort of like reflective shimmery pigment without much like color oomph to them. Um, and when I did swatch these next to the Melt Gemini, I realized how gray they looked. The good thing about the Gemini that I just keep coming back to is these greens are actually, they're not only murky, but they're vibrant. And that's what I think a lot of people are missing. They're trying to recreate these greens. They miss out on this beautiful sort of um, chartreuse green for one that I think makes a huge difference. But these are murky, but they have a lot of color to them. It reminds me of comparing like a dull navy gray color to a vibrant navy blue. Yes, they're it's dull because it's a dark color, but you can get some really beautiful vibrancy. So if I compare just a matte here and the shimmer, so if you just compare them, this is Kaleidos that's melt and they're sort of like the dupe colors in the palette. Kaleidos, oh yeah, that's not a good matte. Kaleidos sort of looks, it looks green, but then when you compare it to Gemini, it doesn't look green. That's that's the murky but vibrancy that I love from Gemini. That is just sad. So. Um, even though I did like some of the Kaleidos palettes, this green one I thought was the worst one. Um, and I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't recommend this one. I would much prefer to recommend the pink or the red because they, I just felt like they performed a lot better and the colors were punchier. 
All right, so those are all the palettes that I've been playing with, um, and I'm gonna move on to some liners. I'm gonna talk about a few types of liners, two types of liners particularly. Um, and these ones I picked up at Chemist Warehouse. Um, I've been to Chemist Warehouse a few times this month. I'll explain why in a second. Um, but uh, I picked up these half price, and I really like the colors. I'm wearing this one here on my waterline, um, which just sets off that purple from the Astro Pink Futurism palette. So I put that the eyeshadow on the lower lash line and I put this purple sort of in the waterline and it's a really beautiful color. These are from Maybelline. They're the tattoo liners. I picked up three because they were half price and I was inspired by the colors. Um, but this one here is Rich Berry and it is a really beautiful sort of um, purpley but ready color. So if I blend that out a bit, I don't know if you can see, but it's got like pinky red berry tones. And I've been loving that just to, as a pop of color. It really sets off brown eyes. It really sets off brown eyeshadow. Um, and that one I really have been enjoying. I also picked up the Intense Green, which I also have been enjoying too. It's like a really sort of cool toned green, but it's really beautiful. What I liked about these were these are actually, I think, matte finish. They don't have a lot of shimmer in them. Most eyeliners that I use for like my waterline are generally tend to be shimmery. Um, and that's just because I find the creamiest ones are like shimmery ones for some reason. Um, but these have been really, really nice and they're sort of matte. This is deep teal, which is a beautiful, beautiful bluey color. So I, I have been playing with a lot of browns, but I have been using some fun colored liners. And these are ones that I have been really enjoying. Some other colored products that I've been using to sort of like amp up a boring look um, are by ColourPop. So it's the first time I've tried this sort of BFF range. This is the liquid liner and it's in the shade uh, Crazy and it's like um, a blue, like a really dark teal blue. It's pretty much that pencil, but in a liquid form. It's really, really beautiful. I've been really enjoying it. Um, I'm not sure when this will dry out or anything like that or when the tip will start fraying, but so far it's been a really, really fun like way to inject a little bit of color. I've also been using the BFF mascara in the shade Blue Your Mind, which is the vibrant blue one. And I've been really enjoying this. I'll put some photos on the screen where I've just added it in as like a pop of color to a look. And I have heard really great things about these, but I've also heard some people say that some shades can be very, very dry and flaky. And I find that this is a little bit flaky. I feel like the color is really beautiful and it shows up quite well on the lashes considering, you know, it's a colored mascara and to coat like brown or black or whatever your lashes might be, it takes a lot of pigment. This does show up really well to the point that your peripheral vision will be like, I just see blue. Um, I have heard that if you use lash primers, so like white primers, let that set, these pop even more, but it's a fun thing that I've been using just on my lower lash line. I think the photo on the screen where I did a close up with this in the lower lash line, I actually used um, the, what do you call it? Queen of Hearts palette by uh, Colored Rain. That's sort of what I paired it with. And I think it's a really nice pairing. So I think the color of this is pretty good. If you build up a layer or two, you can definitely see it. It's fun for a bit of a pop or um, if you just want a soft sort of color over the, over the eyes and have this as a statement color, I think it works really well. I do find that towards the end of the day though, it feels quite dry and if you touch your eyes, it feels really flaky. So um, it's not the best long wear formula, um, but it is fun. And I have been liking adding these in with my basic brown eyeshadows to add a bit of a pop of color. All right, so I said before that I've been going to Chemist Warehouse a lot um, in this month, and there has been sort of two reasons why. One, I went to the doctors, found out I've got some deficiencies, some vitamin deficiencies, so I've been hunting down some vitamins. But also when I did my products that I think deserve more hype video, I mentioned my favorite all-time fragrance of all time, all time ever of all time, uh, CK2 from Calvin Klein. It's a unisex fragrance and I love it. Uh, this is my second bottle and mind you, I have been panning perfumes for the past uh, 18 months. So um, I use this when I want to use a perfume that I really enjoy. Otherwise I use a panning perfume. Uh, if it wasn't for that, this would <laughs> probably be finished by now. Anyway, so when I mentioned this product, a lot of people said that's actually been discontinued cat. And I was like, no. So I tracked a bunch of them down and yes, people are correct on websites. It will tell you that it's discontinued. You can still find them in some stores, I had a few people mention that they still could find it. And um, it's just that when stocks run out, they can't get more stock in because it's been discontinued. So I have been hunting them down, which takes me to a lot of different 
chemists and places to find them. And um, I found the cheapest place to buy them is Chemist Warehouse. So um, I went to a couple, I had to ask when they were in stock. I went to one in Camberwell, I went to one in the city, went to a few around me. Um, and I did find quite a few in stock. So you can still find these around, but um, I think because they haven't really publicized that they're being discontinued. Um, they haven't, a lot of people haven't dropped the prices. So I found that Chemist Warehouse has the best prices. And I also found something that I never knew was around, which was a 160 ml bottle. So this is a 100 ml bottle that I've been using. I've used a 100 ml bottle before, um, but this is a 160 ml bottle, which I found uh, fairly cheap. So originally I picked up a backup 100 ml bottle. So this is a backup full unused um, and then I saw the 160 and I'm like that is great value for money for ten dollars extra I get 60 mils more so I tracked more down and I've got three bottles of these so I'm crazy and I now have four backups of my favorite fragrance that is being discontinued so I would say that tracking these down is definitely a favorite and thank you to all the people that told me it's discontinued because I would have been really upset if I found out because by the time I use this up if I had to go buy a backup they'll be gone. So I'm glad I got to go. I spent like a weekend just hunting them down. Um, and I found some for really good prices. So I was going to get more, but then I thought four bottles, especially when some are 160 mils, this will take me at least a year and a half to use up. Um, and I've still got one that's nearly full hundred mils. So I figured I've got probably like five or six years of perfume here and if I buy too many more I run the risk of them going off so these are going to go up in the corner of a wardrobe they're going to keep them nice and dark and out of the sunlight and nice and never going to open them until I use one up I'm going to reach for another one and I'm going to keep doing that and hopefully in the next five to seven years when I've used up my stash they will have brought them out again that's my hope because this is my favorite perfume it's amazing and um, thank you to everyone that told me it's been discontinued because I did stock up. All right, sort of on to fail type things. Um, I wanted to mention this product from ColourPop. It was fairly new. I think it came out in the watermelon collection. Um, this color is phenomenal. It's fantastic. It's called On The Grill and it is the most amazing pink. If I'm gonna wear a pink, it's gonna be this pink and it is phenomenal. It's, it's like a punch in the face color. Only problem with it is it's the most uncomfortable, dry, hideous feeling product where you can almost feel it flaking off your mouth. Um, but I want to find a way to make this work, whether it is putting it over like a lip balm and just tapping it on because this color is fantastic. And just with a basic brown eye or a basic nude eye and a pop of color. Oh my God, it's amazing. Um, it just, the formula is not good. I don't like these ultra matte lips from ColourPop. Um, I've found only a couple of shades that actually work for me. The rest of them literally flake off my face, but the color pigmentation and the intensity of this cannot be beat. I think it's a beautiful pink. I'm gonna somehow make it work, but it is a fail, unfortunately. So this actually does stay on your lips, like because it stains your lips, but it just feels like your lips are being suffocated and like dry and hideous. So um, beautiful color, horrible formula, but I'm gonna try to make it work because it's gorgeous. All right, the last product I wanna talk about is not necessarily like a strong fail, but it's definitely not a favorite. It's sort of, I want to give an update and I'm leaning towards fail than favorite but I also need to play with it more, but I wanted to give you guys an update. So on Beauty News, we did sort of like a demo of some of the Lush Naked uh, skin products, their skincare products. And the range pretty much consists of bars of oil that do different things. So these circular ones are cleansing oils um, and they you warm them up in your hands and you melt down your makeup you remove your makeup with like a cloth and to remove the oils. They're designed to break down your makeup and they do break down your makeup. But this one, for example, which is like the sleepy face cleansing balm is it's way too hard to melt in my current climate. It's winter. I can like rub this on my hand and like it doesn't like, like actually sort of start uh, warming up because it's too cold right now. So this one takes a lot of work to actually get the butters working and to then want to put on your face because if you rub it in your hands and it still feels dry you're pretty much rubbing dry hands with a little bit of grip on your face it's not super comfortable so this one is for warmer climates um, one that I have 
found that works a lot better in winter is this one here, which is like a virgin cream cleanser. Um, and this one is a little bit more smudgy. So you can see you can break off a bit, warm it up. Clearly it doesn't take higher temperatures to melt this one. So it's a little bit easier. But what I don't like about these, even though they do break down your makeup and they do technically work, you need to use a cloth to remove them because they don't emulsify. So I like cleansing oils that once they mix with water, they break down into a liquid so they don't leave an oily residue. These don't do that. So they leave your face really, really, oily um, and you need to wipe them off physically to remove them and so the first time I used this like my eye makeup was being removed but then the oil wouldn't wash away so I had these massive panda eyes that I had to like rub a cloth over to remove them so do they work yes are they for me no and I find them about 40 times harder than just using a normal emulsifying cleansing oil. So even though these don't have packaging, which is great for the environment, um, I just, uh, for me personally right now in this climate, these aren't very functional. I've also tried a couple of their um, sort of uh, bar moisturizing products. So once again, these are sort of oils in a bar form. This one I particularly love. It smells like Rose Argan uh body conditioner it's beautiful and this is appropriately named argan facial oil so once again you rub these into your hands and then you apply them on your face um, like a facial oil and these are supposed to replace moisturizers i think they can work i do feel like they leave your skin quite nice and quite soft but a little bit oily and i did find that after using these four so i used two uh, facial oils to cleansing oil bars. Um, I use them over about four days. I noticed I started breaking out on my chin. So my sort of skin doesn't like heavy oils um, because it does sort of clog your pores. Bacteria can breed in there, cause breakouts. And I do find that when um, my skin is reacting to something that's too heavy, I get breakouts on my chin and that's what happened with these. So I've sort of stopped using these. I don't know which ones cause the breakouts or if all of them cause the breakouts. I was sort of testing a few at once, which is probably not the best way to test them, but they're just not really products for me personally. Um, I might continue to use these on my like arms and legs. I think they're really nice body oils, um, but facial oils are a little bit heavy for me. So um, I wanted to update you guys on those because I did try them and even though they do work, they're just not for me. All right, guys, I think that's it. Those are sort of like the recap of my month. So the basic makeup that I've been loving using, the makeup that I've been experimenting with, um, what I'd like, what I didn't love so much. Um, and that's about it. So if you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. If you missed any of the products that I mentioned, I will list them in the description box down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.